Hi, Craig Urquhart here with another one of my Berlin Conversations. And today I have the honor to have Reiner Simon here. He's a friend and a colleague and an associate and a real uh, major player here in the cultural life of Berlin. He works as referent at the Komische Oper to um, Barry Kosky, which means in loosely translated, he's the artistic assistant to Barry Kosky. And he's got quite a, a pedigree. He has studied philosophy, musicology, and theater studies in Berlin, Munich, and Paris, as well as directing the Theater Academy August Everding in Munich. He holds an executive master in arts administration from the University in Zurich and a doctoral degree in theater studies. So, welcome. <laughs> That's Hello. quite an impressive resume. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's been great getting to know you through the, our, you know, our projects that we've worked on together at, at the Komische Oper. I mean, we worked on West Side Story and we worked on Candide and, they, and that Bernstein Festival. And it was all very ex exciting and very rewarding for me and I know for the Bernstein family when they came. So th this is how Reiner and I met and um, it's been a real pleasure working with you. But um, first of all, how did you end up coming to Berlin? Thank you for the invitation first of all. It's great to talk to you. Um, uh, yeah, how did I come to Berlin? I mean, I, I grew up in a, in a little village in southern Germany close to Stuttgart mm -hmm. and for a lot of Swabians uh, who want to be free, who want to live in another way of life, they leave uh, uh, Baden-Württemberg, Swabian, um, when they have their Abitur, their, their, their high, high school degree to study somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one of the places in the beginning of the millennium where you had to go if you want wanted to have a different kind of life, a different kind of concept of life was Berlin because it was, you know, in the beginning of the millennium, the, the, the rents were quite low. You could really um, live with a little money. You could study whatever you want to. You uh, could go to theaters, to, to operas. You, there was a, you know, a vibrant queer life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still there yeah. and it's, it's still great. And you're very much a part of it. Yeah, yeah. but in the beginning of the millennium, mm -hmm. it was really the, the kind of, yeah, the, the place to be if you um, want to do, do something different from, um, yeah, everybody's doing like, you know, getting a job and yeah. So this was quite, this was one motivation to go to Berlin. And um, yeah, then I, I was here and I loved the city and I, I studied and I, um, I went to theater, to, to performances, to opera. And I was like, yeah, like, um, how do you call, if you like a swamp, no, sponge, like a sponge. Right, it was right. really like a sponge, a dry sponge, growing up uh, in, in, in southern Germany and then came, coming to Berlin to get all this water, this cultural, this queer water mm -hmm. to, yeah, to, yeah. Yeah, I totally get it. I, yeah. That's one reason why I love living in Berlin, even today. Yeah. Because we have so much cultural life. We have three opera companies and you work for the Coma Show, but with, which happens to be, I probably shouldn't say it, but it's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then we have five orchestras. Seven, seven all in all. Seven, maybe seven. Seven, seven, yeah. seven all in all. Yeah. I mean, God, that's incredible. You yeah, know? Yeah. And there's an active theater life here, which we'll get to in a minute. And mm. um, so, um, what do you do? If, you, if I ask, what does it, what do you do at the Komische Oper? Could you explain it? Because one of the things I like to do with these conversations is have people who work behind the scenes tell us what they do, because you're the unsung heroes mm -hmm. of these projects. You know. So uh, one part of my work is I'm kind of the artistic assistant mm -hmm. to Barry Kosky, which means there's another assistant, I call it the right hand, mm -hmm. who takes care about the scheduling, the traveling, etc. I don't do that. I'm kind of the left hand mm -hmm. who, is, who is responsible for more content and artistic themes, etc. So I, I, I uh, yeah, I'm responsible for that. And then I'm responsible for special additional projects at Komische Oper, for mm -hmm. festivals, for example, for mm -hmm. the Bernstein festivals. 
So um, if there is an idea of Barry, we have to do a festival um, celebrating Bernstein in the Bernstein year or celebrating Kurt Weill's mm -hmm. work, his Broadway work especially. Then he says to me, hey, we have to do something like that. And then I, I will try to, to find a concept for that together with our chef dramaturg, mm -hmm. Ulrich Lenz. And then, um, yeah, I, I have to realize these kind mm -hmm. of festivals and additional projects. So this is, yeah, yeah, I think the main part I'm doing right now. That's lots of fun, isn't it? It's challenging, but yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's, it's great because uh, that means we, a uh, lot of times we, we, we um, cooperate with, with partners mm -hmm. Um, outside the Komische Oper, for example, the Bernstein Foundation mm -hmm. or Arte, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the movie broadcast or the, um, the, the Deutsches Historisches Museum or the uh, Stadtmuseum or the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra or the Berliner Ensemble. This is mm -hmm. really great to work with other cultural institutions, art institutions. And it's challenging because Every project is kind of a single project which needs a special approach. So, and all the partners are different. You know, collaborating with a museum is something totally different from collaborating with a theater. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it's challenging, and you have to find for each project, for each festival, a different way. But this is the fun because you have to be creative in. Um, yeah, organizing and programming this kind of special project. So it's not like, you know, producing a, an opera, there is, I mean, each opera needs its special approach as well. But then there are some frames which are quite similar somehow, mm -hmm. because you start with, with finding a director and a conductor and then some, at some stage you start the, the musical rehearsals and the scenic rehearsals. And to, to, um, to produce these kind of festivals is something different because you, yeah, you, for each festival you have to find some new ways, approaches. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, what kind of collaborations do you do with the museums? Um, we did two uh, cooperations with museums um, in the last years, um, which was we, we did we did uh, we did um, uh, conferences with the mm -hmm. museums to, uh, together with the museum, like in the first uh, uh, the first one with um, a collaboration within our festival Kino Varieté, which is also mm -hmm. a collaboration with Arte. We do this silent movie varieté shows at Komische Oper mm -hmm. twice, once in 2014 or 15 and once in 2018. And um, we kind of stage the silent movies at, as they were staged in the beginning of the history of movie mm -hmm. and silent movies, like varieté shows. So like there was an and a combination of live acts, like there were singers or dancers who, who, who performed a little show act on stage and then you had a short movie, then another live event and then we, uh, uh, a movie. So we did that and we had some themes for the, for the varieté shows and then we had these conferences about these themes, for example, Russian Revolution mm -hmm. or um, Berlin Varieté in the 20s and we did uh, yeah, collaborations with the museums and they had at the same time exhibitions about these kind of topics. So this was, yeah, we, there was kind of um, overlapping um, 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 interest so of the museums and the... Fascinating. Museum. I don't know how I missed that. I yeah. just don't know how I missed that. <laughs> yeah, there's so much going on in yeah. Berlin. You cannot, you cannot, oh. you cannot, yeah. Yeah, so that sounds yeah. fascinating. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and do you work with the singers, or is that, or is that somebody else? I mean, um, usually I don't work with mm -hmm. the singers because I'm not a director. You right. know, I mm -hmm. don't, I, I don't stage <clears throat> anything. Um, but of course, if we need some singers for ex for a festival, of course. They, they can be part of the festival, mm -hmm. but it's not me who is directing them. Right. I'm mm -hmm. just more like programming the festival, organizing the festivals, and mm -hmm. then maybe they're, they're seeing as part of the festival. But we have like assistant directors right. 
who take care of staging of things, yeah. So, so was musical theater and theater really a passion of yours from a very early age or um, how did you get into this role? Um, I think <clears throat> music has been always a passion mm -hmm. of me. I, so I, when I was a child I studied the, the violoncello, I studied piano a little bit, I'm a bad piano player. Um, but I, 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 yeah, when I was 15, 14, 15 I was thinking about studying uh, cello. Mm -hmm. I, I thought maybe I would like to become a musician. And I loved theater. I was I was part of, of a theater group in, in at high school, and I really loved playing and act. And so, and then I th I think when I was sixteen or something like that, then I thought, oh, there's opera, you know, like this combination of uh, of music and theater. And then at the same time, Klaus Zehelein, um, uh, who, who was a, a famous artistic director in these days. Um, uh, he was the artistic director of Stuttgart Opera House, mm -hmm. and Stuttgart Opera House was in these in the nineties, you know the yeah the one of the most interesting places for opera and music theaters. So um, it was elected, if you can say elected, or I don't know, yep, yeah, elected for opera opera house of the mm -hmm, year within yeah. the German um, um, uh, German opera scene. I don't know, five or six times yeah. uh, in the row. So it was really a really, really interesting place to, to watch new kind, uh, new, kind, new way of directing mm -hmm. and presenting opera. So me as a high school student, I went there by train um, nearly every weekend to watch the shows, the performances, which took place there. And I mean, these were really like contemporary approaches right, yes. like you know really experimental really like you you, you I mean I had I had a, I had a, uh, my, my, my my high school teacher in music she wouldn't want to go there because you couldn't see opera like it has to be presented on stage right. like what 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 means in a traditional way mm -hmm. because you couldn't see that in, in, and I was fascinated fascinated by the way you presented, uh, or Klaus Seelein and his team presented music theater, um, this old art form in a new contemporary way. I was mm -hmm. really like, wow, this is possible on stage. And I mean, the link from Stuttgart Opera House to Komische Oper, Barry Kosky, I mean, it's obvious somehow. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, this was kind of the, yeah, I. Yeah, Komische Oper is one opera house of the year many times, a couple times, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it has been like the, the Opera House of the Year, the, and the Choir of the Week. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so. yeah. And Bar yeah. Barry, of course, has been yeah. Director of the Year several times. Yeah, so. no, I mean, I, I just love the productions there, and they're, and they're interesting, and they're fun, and I, like, I love the repertoire, mm -hmm. because he's trying to do, he, he's done things with, you know, musicals and things that were written during the Weimar Republic, and that's really interesting, especially in Berlin. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's so much fun to go there. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a nice group of people who attend totally. there too. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, every opera house has their different audiences. Of here course, in of course. Yeah. It's just it's fun. So that's interesting. So then you went, you came to Berlin to study, and then you went to Paris. Yeah, for that must for have been fun for half a year. Yes, mm. this was. I mean, it was great <clears> because I mean, I. I mean, I studied in Paris, but I didn't study at university. But I went to theaters. I went to Centre Pompidou. Mm. I, I mean, I I went to the movies. I mean, I just you know it was like uh, art input, art input, mm -hmm. and I I loved the time. But at the end of the time, I, I really wanted to go back to Berlin because it's somehow different. You know, mm -hmm. to live in Paris is, I mean, if you want to live there and if you want to have a good life in Paris, you need a lot, a lot of money. money. Yeah. And there's not so much space as in Berlin, for example. I mean, in Berlin, you have so many parks, you have like, you know, public places where you can meet and it's not crowded like hell. And in, mm -hmm. in Paris, it's, I mean, it's a wonderful city and the art life in Paris is great. And uh, I mean, you you feel like uh, on every meter, there is like uh, 
yeah, there's it's 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 crowded of history and it's mm -hmm. my I mean it's, it's it's fantastic, but at the end of the half uh, half of the year I thought okay it's good to go back to Berlin, but nevertheless with you know with a lot of artistic inspirations yeah. and you know yeah I mean this is really great and, and the food the food I mean well, the food, the food is something yeah. else than in Berlin so do yeah. you speak fluent French? I would say I. I have spoken fluent <laughs> French. Now I would say I, I mean I, I can yeah. express myself and I can yeah. you know I Hello. can talk to people, but it's not like like it, yeah like it, your English thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 not at all. Yeah. So what you also you worked with this August Everding uh, Academy, is that what it's the Theater Academy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I, I actually knew Mr. Everding. Yeah. Way yeah. before your time. But yeah. He was quite a wonderful guy, and he was a good friend of Bernstein. Name. Yeah, and, <clears throat> and he, unfortunately, I haven't met him. I yeah. was was after <clears throat> his time. So, yeah. what did you do there? I, I actually I, I haven't really worked there, but I studied there. Oh, you studied. For, you got, I studied. Yeah. I studied there just for one year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was in two thousand and three or something like yeah. that. I I had the idea of me being a director. So I and I thought, okay, let's study it, and I studied it, and I, you know, it was. Was wasn't wasn't easy to get into this. Uh, no, it's this a very because, prestigious. Yeah, it's yeah. a very prestigious um, um, uh, um, group. But then when I started to study it, I just felt no, I'm not a director. I I I mean I have ideas of course, and I'm I, I love the art form opera. I love theater, and it's quite special at August Everding because normally in Germany you have to choose e either you study theater directing or opera directing but in Munich you can study both and I thought I, I like the link in between theater and opera and um, you have to do like uh, dramas at, at, at the uh, you have to direct dramas and theater plays at August Everding as well as opera pieces so this is I think this is a nice a nice form of educating uh, uh, directors but then I really I thought okay it's not really the thing I, I can do and I'm, I'm, I'm good at so I, I, I started it and then after half a year or I don't know seven months or something like that I, 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 I went to my, uh, my professor and I told him I think I have to go back to Berlin I have to continue my, my studies of philosophy theater studies mm -hmm. and music I, I think it's more my cup of tea and then he was like oh this is interesting. Nobody before you, perhaps nobody, but there are just a few students who did that, who quit the mm -hmm. August Academy of August Even And all my, my, my colleagues came to me and told me, you really, you are really re leaving the academy. Um, this is quite, um, how do you say, uh, this is quite, uh, you have courage, no, you, you, you. Courage, yeah. Courage, you have courage because usually you don't give up such a, such a position mm -hmm. because, yeah, it's quite valuable. But for me, it was, it was, it was, it was really good. And after that, I never thought about directing anything mm -hmm. and it was a good decision. Well, it, it sounds like your position you have now brings together music, philosophy, and what was the third thing? Um, theater studies. Yeah. So, so, the, so you get to do use all of this totally in your creating these festivals. And totally, kind of totally, and it was good, you know, to try mm. out if I would like to become a director. You know, it was mm -hmm. it was kind of a test, and at the end, I I said, okay, it's nothing for me. I mean, but I, you know, but I I tried it, and this was good because afterwards, you know, I I. Otherwise, maybe I would have regretted it to not uh, trying it out. Right, so yeah. it's 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 yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, it, it, that's what being young is all about. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. Yes. And and I mean, I, yeah. also I think it it has it, it it has to do with the freedom which you felt in Berlin to try out things. You know, to I mean, when you are young, you you should try out some mm. different kind of things and to because afterwards you don't have maybe the yeah, i mean you have you you have the chance to try to try out things at a, at a later stage of your life as well but you know i think in the in the beginning of your 20s it's it's good to kind of test 
things out well, and yeah. Yeah, I moved to New York when I was 23, didn't know one person in the yeah. city. You yeah. know, it was a crazy thing to do. Yeah. But if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, it's totally. just yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, you also work with a BAM, and it's, it doesn't have anything to do with Brooklyn BAM. Nothing, nothing, nothing. What did, could you tell me a little um, bit about that? BAM is a festival for contemporary <clears throat> music theater, and um, it's kind of the festival of the independent free scene, music theater scene in Berlin, of the independent music theater groups and producers in Berlin. So it has nothing to do with the three big opera houses, mm -hmm. but with the independent music theater groups. And um, it's quite interesting because um, there is a really strong performance art or live art scene in mm -hmm. Berlin since years. And then there is a really strong scene of contemporary dance mm -hmm. in, 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 in Berlin with the, with the lobby as well. And in, I think it was 2015 when a few music theater groups came together and said, we also need kind of an independent free music theater, a strong music theater scene within in Berlin. And so we founded together an association and I'm a member of the board of this association. Mm -hmm. And then after a few years we said, we need a platform where we could present the work of the independent music theater groups of Berlin. And then we said, we have to program a festival. And then in 2018, so two years ago in autumn, we did the first edition of the festival at Sophienseele, which is mm. uh, um, yeah, a venue for the free scene mm -hmm. of Berlin, of the free performing arts scene in Berlin. And um, yeah, we, we did the first edition, which was quite successful. And then a lot of different um, independent music theater groups presented their work there. Mm -hmm. And then last year we did the second edition at Volksbühne, oh, which wonderful. was yeah. also um, yeah, a huge success. And now we, we we are thinking of doing the next edition in 2021. Hopefully, hopefully we'll find a venue, hopefully we get some money for that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I hope we can do that. And I think it's a good, a good, a good sign to say, okay, there are the three big opera houses, they are all different, but there's also like, there are different kind of music theater groups outside of, 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 of the opera houses. Mm -hmm. And they also can show their kind of work to, a, to an audience. So I, um, yeah, so this is kind that's, of That's This is what makes Berlin so exciting. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Yeah. So when you're not working, what kind of things do you do in Berlin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> If it's not too uh, personal. Yeah, 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 yeah no, 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 but no, I mean, no, no, I mean uh, we live know. in COVID-19 times, yeah. so now these days we, I don't yeah. do too much. But I, I, I mean, I, I go to, to the theater a lot, of yeah. course, to, to, to different kinds of theater. Usually I, I go a lot to, to, to theater productions, performance, uh, performance, uh, live art performances, because, you know, if you if your daily day business is opera, you it's great to see some in your in your free time something else. So mm -hmm. and I go a lot to move. I go to the to the movies. I I mean of course I watch series series on Netflix. Yeah, of course, of course yeah. I I mean I like reading books. I, mm -hmm. I really enjoy reading books. And then I I mean at the weekends I like doing doing trips to Brandenburg, which is. Yeah, it's beautiful. the countryside yeah, yeah. Um, around Berlin, and I, I like um, going there by bike, doing mm -hmm. bike tours, and you can do that. Uh, well, we uh, just did a twenty-five kilometer one in um, Potsdam. The other yeah, day. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know. so there are a lot of areas where you yeah. have beautiful lakes. You have, uh, you, I mean, you have, you have nature. Like, I mean, yeah, beautiful nature. You, you, you meet animals, which you which I haven't seen since I was a little child. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's really, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, 
it's a great environment. So you put the bike on the uh, the regional? Or yeah, yeah, I put the bike yeah. on the regional, and then I do like trips and yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's that's great. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 fantastic. I mean, you, as, as you mentioned, Potsdam, it's so beautiful. The yeah. the, the lakes there, Werder yeah. and Kaput and Wannsee, yeah. it's great. But also in the north, there. I mean, all around Berlin, there are so many lakes and so many so many. Um, great bike lines, mm -hmm. so you you can really. I mean, yeah, it's really fun to 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 mm -hmm. do some trips there. I'm always afraid to ask questions about Berlin because everybody's going to want to come here because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's such a great place to live. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. what I also like in summer times. I I mean. Prinzenbad is one of my favorite places. You mm -hmm. know the the, the 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 big swimming pool. The big swimming pool in Kreuzberg. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a it's one of the favorite places places of many people mm -hmm. because it's it's really great. I like going swimming there. So mm -hmm. yesterday I went swimming there. Oh, it's open now. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's great. open. Yeah. It's open now, but with yeah, of course, with mm -hmm. um, like the yeah. the typical. Uh, uh, um, German regulation. Regulation, yeah. yeah. So and afterwards, I, 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 I mean, I like also going to 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 bars and and restaurants, mm -hmm. of course. Like in Kreuzberg, there is there are some favorite pla places for me, like Möbel Olfe, which yeah. is a queer place. Then Südblock, yeah. which is also well, a queer yeah. place, which is the beer garden as well, right, which yeah. opened I don't know two weeks ago. So you oh, can go open, there because yeah. it's outside. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all fun. Yeah, yeah totally. It's, uh, great. Totally. So, um, what are you looking? Uh, another question I had: How did you come to the Kamsha Oper? This is uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a funny story. I mean, I uh, when I came to Berlin, I I realized that I mean there are three different opera houses, mm -hmm. and I realized for me the most interesting opera house here in Berlin is the Kamsha Oper because of its tradition, because of it's you know it's the smallest opera house, mm -hmm. but it's also the most Flexible, flexible, maybe in these days and maybe today as well. But I don't want to talk about what yeah, we are now no, because no, I mean, that's it, yeah, yeah. That's something. Else. But in these days, the most creative opera house, from my point of view, mm. and I like the the, the the productions there. And then I saw, you know, in the, I think it was two thousand and five or six, I saw. Barry Kosky's Le Corps Macabre, which was, you know, something else. It was so crazy and so, you know, it was really different from anything I saw on opera stages so far. So there was a link to, to, to Komische Oper. Mm -hmm. I really, I thought this is really a very, very interesting opera house. And then I think it was 2010 or 9 mm -hmm. or 10, I was in Zurich and I studied um, this um, theater management um, uh, 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 studies and mm -hmm. then Barry Kosky came and he was one of the guests there and he he just talked I think one hour or half an hour about opera opera as necrophilia and it was so it was, I mean it was so interesting and he talked so you know, I mean, you know Barry. He he he. He's very uncon unconventional. He's very inspiring. Mm -hmm. He is so. I mean, you you look at him and you you think, okay, he knows a lot about opera. He's he's really like a serious person, and he really you know he is so uh, interested in opera, but. In the, at the same time, he's so entertaining. He is inspiring. He he knows a lot about pop culture as well. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not only about high art, but he knows a lot about high art. And I thought, you know, this combination is quite special. And I thought this is this is really interesting. And that's I, I just want to work with somebody yeah, like, like him. Mm -hmm. I think he he's one of the most interesting artists in in the field of opera. On, on earth somehow mm -hmm. and I thought yeah and he was just announced to become the artistic director right. of Komische mm -hmm. Oper and then I just contacted him I, I, I said you are such an interesting person I saw your Le Croix Macabre I saw your Figaro at Komische Oper I, I think these productions are really really great 
and I listened to you talking about your visions for Komische Oper and I thought I have to contact him and I contacted him, then we met. And it was quite funny because, I mean, it wasn't like a, a, a usual, um, how do you say, Vorstellungs a interview. job interview? Job yeah. interview. It wasn't a job interview at all because I, I talked a little bit about about my my CV, about my uh, bi biography, but after that, he talked about his visions for Komische Oper, and I just listened to him. And after that, you know, he, he called me and said, "Yeah, you be, I'm, you, you could be you could be my assistant. You could be yeah, you could you could you could um, helping me with with yeah, yeah. the plannings for Komische Oper." And then yeah. It's it's that's a great story. It's, yeah, yeah. It kind of parallels mine with Bernstein. You know? Yeah. I don't know if you know my story. No, no, no. Well, I when I got to New York, I just left a note with some of my music with his doorman at the Dakota, yeah. and I got a phone call six weeks later to come and meet him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we developed over the years, and I didn't work for him right away because I didn't feel I was ready to because mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. very young. Yeah. And so about six years later, I started working. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, I think I've got the feeling it was, it was, of course, it was luck somehow. But yeah. on the other side, it was also like, I really wanted to work with him. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think it's, it, 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 I mean, you could, you could send emails and, 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 uh, and contact a lot of arti artistic directors just like that because you want to get a job. But I think it helps a lot if you are really, if you really think, okay, this person is interesting for mm -hmm. me and I want to work with him or her. And I think this was kind of the key for, for, yeah, for, for getting in touch with mm -hmm. Barry because he, I think he felt that. Because I, I didn't I didn't talk too much about myself when we met, but I think he got the feeling okay this guy he's really interested in working at Komische Oper and he is really really interested in working with me because he likes my my work and he yeah so I think this well it's been a very fruitful collaboration so totally yeah, totally yeah, totally totally, totally, yeah. totally yeah so you're very fortunate to work with somebody like Barry yeah yeah it's, totally I mean, he I, is yeah you totally. as you say he's probably one of the greatest in the world and he's totally and he's also a really nice guy he is a really yeah that's yeah. i mean that's also something he he is i mean i know he's very demanding yeah but that's okay yeah. but is i think you would say he's very authentic mm -hmm. in a way you know if you if you if you watch an interview with him on yeah on television mm -hmm. or on youtube or somewhere else i mean he is like that also in the office. I mean, it's not, there's not, you know, a gap between him being uh, in the public and him being at the opera house yeah, yeah. at a meeting or something with just with colleagues. So I think he's, he's quite offending and that's, that's also quite nice. Mm -hmm. He's really a nice person and, and a great artist. And as I said, I mean, he's really, really open-minded and mm -hmm. I like, I mean, I, I like the idea of, music theater being a lot of different kind of things. You know, music theater is operetta, is musical, is experimental music. Uh, music theater could also be like, uh, you know, a few in musicians and a video camera and maybe no, no singers, but also that could be like music mm -hmm. theater or even an installation could be music theater. So I like the idea of a broad concept of music theater. And I think Barry is one of the art, uh, music theater artists who not only um, thinks theoretical wise of music theater of a broad genre, but he really does it in a practical sense. You know, he, he does operettas, he does musicals, oh, yeah. he does um the pieces of the 19th century the opera pieces but he also does like new pieces so i, I think and i like that i am i'm yeah I, because it's yeah it's i i have the same music theater concept so that's great yeah that's super okay so well th thanks so much for coming by it's been really great having you here and i've learned a Thank lot you. Of, about you and and it's been it's been really wonderful and as i said it's been wonderful to c collaborate with you over the years mm -hmm. and 
So I really appreciate you coming over here today and having a little chat. Thank you. So, okay, so thank you. So thank you for tuning in to Berlin Conversations, and I hope you come back for the next one, and do um, visit the, my website, www.craigurquhart.com, and I look forward to seeing you for the next Berlin Conversations.